Hi class, I'm Leah. This week um, for our assignment in 1 Peter, I wanted to focus on God being a covenant keeper, on how he is steadfast and solid and how we can trust what he says because he's been faithful in the past and he's faithful now and we can trust because of that. Um, he will be faithful to us in the future. And we have something to look forward to. We have a promise, um, hope of heaven and glorification. And when we look back to the Jews in the Old Testament, we can see that their promised land is similar to our promised land. How our promised land is spiritual, it's in heaven. And um, that's what we have to look forward to, just as, the, just as the Jews looked forward to their promised land. Even in 1 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, um, he uses the word elect exiles, kind of pointing back to the Old Testament of the Jews being in exile and um, in a foreign land, in a foreign nation, much like how as Christians, we're not of this world. We're not called to be like this world. We are called to be set apart and different and separate. And we're called to be holy. And we're gonna face many trials and tribulations and um, suffering in this world until we get to our promised land. Um, and then I know, I know it's not first Peter, but I wanted to bring up Galatians 3, 7. The fact that we're called spiritual children of Abraham points to the fact that um, we're fulfilling the covenant. Uh, God didn't get rid of the old covenant. It's been fulfilled now that the church has um, been included in God's plan for the world. That it started with Israel and has expanded to add and incorporate and adopt and graft in the church as well. Um, so I just think, I think that's cool to bring up when we're ever, we're talking about covenant. First Peter 1, 4, um, just kind of goes over the inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you. Um, and much like the Jews had their promised land that was their inheritance, we have our promised land, which is in heaven. Um, first Peter 2, 11, just talks about how as exiles in a foreign land, we must maintain our faith despite temptations, like I mentioned earlier. Um, and 1 Peter 2, 9 emphasizes covenants, and it refers to us as a holy nation, a chosen race. Let me read that to you in verse uh, 9, chapter 2. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you, out of darkness and then i'm going to jump down to verse 11 beloved i urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul so i just think it's really neat looking back to the old testament and looking to now how god had standards and um, expectations of israel to set them apart from other nations, to showcase the fact that God had a covenant relationship with the, with these people. And in the same way, we're called to be set apart and different because he has a covenant relationship with us. So I just think it's super encouraging and really cool to look back on how God's always been the same and steadfast. And um, we can learn from the Old Testament as well as a church, as God's elect people um, because we've been included into that um, election and that holy priesthood and that holy new nation made up of many nations, of many people, um, united under the fact that we've been saved by Christ alone.